Let me first begin by telling you, uh, we know that we're not more important than any other county government uh, agency. And based on that, when we uh, were told first to address the 25.7%, we did just as we were instructed. You are funding, you are our funding mechanism. So we looked at that and we replied to you in that. When we met last Friday, and you did an outstanding job, Commissioner Burby, as you prefer to be explained it last Friday as well as you did this morning, uh, again, we know that uh, we're no, no more important than any other county office, and uh, so we took a very serious look at those cuts. And uh, I want to bring you up to a little bit of history, first of all. And uh, first of all, I, what I started out with is uh, you know, the year the employees, prisoners, what our budget was and how much less we've taken. And I've noted 2011 back to 2007. Uh, we went from 249 employees in 2007 down to 175 and a half employees this year. So far this year, we've booked 4,638 prisoners, and that's at, as of July 24th. In the year 2000, we booked 11,764. That's processed. In 2007, our budget was 17,519,751, and in the 2011, it was 13,884,409. And that last column, it shows you that we have progressively taken less. In 2008, we took $177,000 less. 2009, $553,000 less. In 2010, $278,000. In 2011, $2.6 million. Uh, in the 2011 uh, year, we also uh, reduced our jail population down to 300 inmates from 502 to 300. We closed nine housing areas of the jail. Prisoners incarcerated, uh, I gave you a breakdown on a monthly basis. You get this every month from me anyways, as the court does. But uh, you can see in 2007 we were averaging 453 prisoners sitting in our jail monthly. And uh, for the year two, 2011, we're averaging 308 with the highest month of 343. Our jail population as Monday, July 25th was 318 inmates. And I've attached to Mike's copy here a copy of every single inmate that's in that jail, not by name, but by crime, to show you the type of criminals that are left there. And <clears throat> the first page depicts 96 criminals, and uh, they're all felony charges, uh, to include murder so on and so forth. Our projected budget for uh, 2012 was $8,320,960. So our appropriation uh, from 2011, of course, was $13,000,000.8. So we have a reduction of $5,500,000,000, uh, $5,449. If you will look, our reduction since 2007 to 2012, we've gone down. Uh, $9,198,791. We are actually operating on 47.5% of what our budget was in 2007. So we have decreased our spending enormously over those years to conform with the amount of money available to uh, the elected offices and other offices funded by the Commission. Based on the projected 2012 budget that you just uh, uh, supplied us. We eliminated all of our maintenance agreements and we'll have to renegotiate our mental health, our correction, our medical and food contract. And I've only listed the most expensive ones here too. There's a lot more uh, like there was in your obligations. But mental health, we would eliminate mental health in the jail completely and that would save us $262,650. What that will do though is open up the county to very much liability in regards to dealing with mental health patients on having a mental health staff. Our food and medical contracts will have to be reduced by $789,000. So that's a matter of opening those two contracts, renegotiating with those two firms to uh, bring that number down by that figure. Motorola, that's the service contract to keep our radio system going for the entire county. We would not pay that. Uh, it'd be a, that's a reduction of $171,403. Our Simplex system, which monitors all our fire alarms in the uh, jail, uh, would not be paid, and that's 10800 Our text and data, which is the company that we have that services our jail computers, 
and also feeds everybody in the criminal justice system and every police department in the uh, county that has access. That's 7,950. Integrators, that is our new jail security system within the new jail that has been incorporated into the old jail. Uh, we would not pay integrators for their services, and that would be 26,400. There are various under vendors of uh, smaller amounts in there. I don't have a, quite a number for you in regards to like, that you had 45 line items. But uh, in total, we would, uh, by doing away with all of those contracts and maintenance agreements, we would reduce our budget by 1,317,000. Now we get the personnel. Now we have to reduce our personnel to meet a reduction of an additional 4.7 million. The number of employees laid off will depend on the position, length of service, and contractual obligations that those people have. So we don't know the number until we start going backwards in our seniority columns and start taking people out of the picture until we meet $4.7 million. Currently there are 47 employees being paid for through grants or contracts not out of the general fund. After fulfilling those obligations, the remaining employees paid through general fund will provide services to the jail, the road patrol, the civil process, records, and star count. We'll be requested that the common police court judges reduce the jail population to 112 inmates and close all but the new addition effective December 8, 2011. And the reason we picked 2011, December 8, because that's the last payday in this year's budget. And we start eating away uh, after that at next year's money keeping 10 jail beds in reserve. If you'll all remember, the new jail set, uh, <clears throat> area holds 122 bodies. Uh, we would like to keep 10 in reserve, and that is because that not everyone is it be, uh, some inmates can't be housed together because of their crime, because of their gender, because of their age, because of their gang affiliation, or the mere fact that they're co-defendants with somebody else. So the courts ask us to separate them, the prosecutor's office asks to ask us to separate them we need the ability to do that. So we're looking at 122 beds and the luxury of having 10 beds where we can uh, keep other prisoners separated from each other. We'll request that the commissioners provide cities of Massillon, Canton, and Alliance a 90-day a notice that would be that they won't be able to utilize the Stark County Jail in accordance with Section 1905.36 of the High Revised Code. We'll stop all 24-hour booking of inmates and only receive felony inmates from the Common Police Court during specified limited hours Monday through Friday. The cities of Massman, Canton, and Lyons will have to reopen their jails to incarcerate any fresh arrests prisoners from the 20 plus law enforcement agencies in Stark County. The Sheriff's Office will try to answer all felony and progress calls and respond to domestic violence situations uh, as mandated by law as soon as possible. We'll eliminate our AOD program, and that is our alcohol and other drug program that's been so successful and actually funds itself, plus percentages of other employees' wages. We will not be able to house those type of prisoners. There will be nowhere for them and no way to guard them. Well, the elimination of inmate labor, we, on a, prior to this last cut from 2009, we were employing, employing, we worked. 48 inmates every day were assigned to some type of work in that jail, whether it be cleaning, mowing, washing cars, uh, whatever the case may be, they were all working, 48 of them. Uh, we're down to hardly any right now, and they will totally be gone because only certain inmates who are classified as trustees uh, would be able to do that work. Presently, there are 12 assigned to the kitchen every day, and that's why our meal cost is so low for each prisoner's meal. At approximately a dollar a meal. And of course that will be renegotiated and it will go up in cost uh, due to the fact we don't have the inmate labor there to help them. So we'll be paying more for meals but we'll have less inmates in the jail. Uh, we realize the impact that Stark County is under. We're sympathetic to the fact that uh, the, the commissioners only have 36 million dollars to allocate and we understand that. We're trying to live within our means. We have tried to live within our means since as I pointed out, since 2007, and we have constantly gone downhill. Uh, the last layoff period uh, did take uh, 41 employees from us uh, and devastated the sheriff's office. 
and the services we were able to, that we were able to provide. This will uh, firstly be a calamity that I can't even explain. Um, we know that the recorder's office, the treasurer's office, the auditor's office, the coroner's office, uh, the prosecutor's office, all the other, we know what effect they have on other folks in the county just as well as we do. We impact everybody in the county and especially in the law enforcement side. So we're asking, we'd love to see uh, 1%. We don't think half a percent personally, uh, and my staff is enough, uh, but that's your call, not ours. Uh, that's what you were elected for, to uh, make those decisions. And whatever you do, we will have the employees left and probably some of those that are laid off, and of course all of us there to support you in your endeavors to try to get a tax pass. Thank you. Let me ask you a question. Uh, right now, uh, how many correction officers do you have regarding the number of people? Well, first of all, it's not just corrections. There's deputies and corrections. So let me... Let me uh, explain that to you a minute. Many years ago we started hiring corrections long before I was sheriff. It was back under when uh, Babe, uh, Babe uh, Stern first became sheriff. We had a federal court degree come down on us and it made us hire an additional employees. Back then they decided what they were going to do is create another whole career position and that being corrections officers. So they started hiring corrections officers in there to work in the jail. It's the only place a corrections officer can work. They have no authority of arrest except in the jail, and they cannot carry a gun, they're not armed, and so on and so forth. So they can't do the job of a deputy. It got to a point where we were running out of deputies and had more corrections, and so I couldn't service the courts, I couldn't service the public without more deputies. So we stopped hiring corrections officers, and they were being paid the same as a deputy anyways. And we changed the pay scale some, and we started hiring deputies. So we have both deputies and corrections officers working the jail. We are down to? Right now, to answer your question, there are days when I have one officer guarding over 100 prisoners. Um, and in two separate sections. The other day, a young lady that works for us called me and said that she was watching 86 prisoners by herself. That is extremely dangerous. Uh, we have no cert team left in the jail whatsoever anymore. We have violent inmates that will throw feces, urine. They could be HIV infected. They'll throw blood on us to try to infect us. I no longer have a CERT team to be able to go in and deal with those types of prisoners. So that entire jail division is very, very dangerous in terms of what's going on today with the current uh, cuts that we've had to take. Back to the courthouse security. We have two deputies at the courthouse that are paid for by the courts. We have two here at the county office building that are paid for by the commissioners. That's all you'll have. I can tell you that. There won't be those other deputies here. They'll be gone.